What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Rob Younce, and thank you for tuning back into the CaneCast Show. If today is your first episode, you're in for a treat. If you've been with us before, we really appreciate you coming back. Either way, today's guest will make you better just by listening to him. But before we get into that, I'd like to ask a favor of you to help us grow this show. First and foremost, just smash the like button. Give us a like. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast host, smash that like button. Two, you can drop us a comment to let us know what you think about the show. Three, help us grow the community by subscribing. It lets others know that this show is legit. Four, you could show us some love with a review or just share it. Send this episode to friends and families who are missing baseball right now. They need a fix, right? Today, we are bringing on someone who is no stranger to having a major impact in baseball and in your earbuds. He has the doctorate, the only doctorate, in certified audio gold with his podcast for the ABCA and now with Stick and Ball TV. His name is Jeremy Sheetinger. Sheets is the head coach at NAIA Powerhouse Georgia Gwinnett College. I am honored to call him a friend and love the message he delivers today. If you're a baseball player, a coach, or simply a fan of the game, Sheets will drop bombs of info on what to expect in recruiting, what college coaches look for, and what to expect when you actually get onto campus. So sit back and get dialed in because Sheets is delivering the goods right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Rob Younts here and Jeff Petty back uh, with Canecast. And man, do we have a treat for you today. I think you've seen that beautiful mug on uh, all over social media, man. Um, I think this possibly is the first time we've had three bald guys. Well, it is on this show, but yes. man. <laughs> but I'm Sheets. not fighting for hair on this show. This is, uh. <laughs> we got Jeremy Sheetinger, man. Jer Sheets, thanks so much. Um, you know, we've seen you all over the place. You've done phenomenal things. Um, you're keeping everybody super entertained with Stick and Ball TV, and you just got so much going on. So thank you so much for taking time today to, to meet, uh, talk with Jeff and I. Tell us about your – tell us a little bit about you. Give, if, if you're living under a rock, what do they need to know about Sheets? First and foremost, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate this opportunity. You guys, uh, I'm huge Rob Younce fans. I'm huge Jeff Petty fans. I'm a huge fan of the Canes, and I have been for a long time. And getting to know you guys and getting to know more in depth of how you run the organization and, and to the extent of player development. And, uh, you know, again, from a small college perspective, the, the true placement for right fit, that matters to us, man. And, and again, I cannot thank you guys enough. You obviously become dear friends of, of mine, but um, I really appreciate and value what your organization stands for and works at. So thank you for having me on. And obviously everybody out there, hope you get some out of this. Um, so I'll start from the beginning. I am the most handsome guy on the call, period. Uh, there is no debate. Big uh, yeah, no doubt. Um, so I let's go back. So I, I grew up in Frankfort, Kentucky. If you can't tell by this, this thick Kentucky hick draw, it ain't going away. Um, born and raised there. Uh, played at Franklin County High School in Frankfort, Kentucky. I was, we're going to talk some recruiting stuff. I was, for lack of all argument, and there's nobody else here to debate it, uh, best player on my high school team, hitting the four Absolutely. hole, first baseman, like, you know, absolute hashtag dude, no doubt. Um, we had some good players, but um, – when you're the when you're the middle of the order hitter for a small town high school team, sometimes that bubble shades your view of what the world is. So in my city, sure. In my region, just another player. In the state, lost in the shuffle nationally. What are you even talking about? So I think sometimes I'll come back. I reference that back, but I took a Division two scholarship at the first school that came calling. I was so excited. It was like the hot girl that, that approached me in school, and I went. Yeah, whatever. I'll buy you mozzarella sticks right now. Let's go. Um, I jumped in, and she. Wait a she Wait a Is that your go-to move? Buy a mozzarella sticks? One thousand percent. If, if <laughs> look, there's a reason I got this wife upstairs. She loved mozzarella sticks, and so we hooked her That's up. Awesome. We got her called. Um, but but I jumped right into it. Like first money that was dangled, the carrot that was dangled, I jumped right in, and um, it, it turned out to be not the right fit. Period. And I was there for a year. I redshirted my second year. I had shoulder surgery, and I transferred back home to Kentucky Wesleyan College, finished up, average Division II player, uh, bum shoulder, never recovered. But I knew I wanted to coach, and so I took my playing career in the summers, and I actually did not go out and play. I actually went and coached. And so at 20 years old, I was a head coach. 21, I was a head coach. 22, I learned how to really grow a, um, 
a business that renovated baseball fields and built pitching mounds and stuff like that. So I had the ins and outs of, of blue collar uh, coach life. And I got right into coaching. I coached NAI for a couple of years, Georgetown College and Brescia University. Uh, I ran a baseball academy for a year with my, my college coach. That led me into coaching summer baseball, the Owensboro Oilers, first year back in the Kit League, now the Ohio Valley League. We won the league that year. Coached a player at Brescia, so I got me back into that, that space. Um, I then went out and got an opportunity to be the GA at the University of Kentucky with John Cohen, Gary Henderson, Brad Bohannon, Brian Green. Some name drops there, but some really, really good people in baseball. And I was there for three seasons, the director of baseball operations, ran our camps, and I did that for three years. I went back to Division II, it's where my heart was, and I was a head assistant at St. Joe's with Rick Odette. And then I left there and was a head coach at Spalding University in Louisville, uh, Division III. I was there for three years. And then I got out, and I completely took 11 years, and I went a different route, and I went into the American Baseball Coaches Association, worked there for four years. And uh, I've also been an associate scout, special assignment guy with Atlanta Braves for the last five years. So I did that, but then decided I got to pull back into coaching. Now I'm the head coach at Georgia Gwinnett College, which is a, a upper echelon NAI program down here in Lawrenceville, Georgia, right outside Atlanta. Extremely excited uh, to be part of it and uh, running my own podcast, the Dugout Chatter Podcast, powered by Stick and Ball TV. So I'm staying busy. Uh, but uh, yeah, that in a nutshell, that's it. 16 years of uh, damage right there. Yeah, man, that's awesome. dude. That's that's a great. I mean, a lot of people would, would call that a great career right now. I mean, if you just Went away. I'll retire right now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, right. (laughs) So, man, so much there. And and that's why, you know, we wanted to have you on. You know, I think uh, we've had phone conversations. I think I've seen you more uh, in the last week than than I had the previous year. So, uh, you know, and one of my treasured memories was seeing you at the the Wilson premiere uh, and and being able to actually snap a picture with you. That's it. Oh, yeah. I've, I've got that puppy. Uh, got that puppy hanging up at the house. It better be on the mantle. That's all I'm saying. It's a mantelpiece picture. Don't don't keep that in your phone. <laughs> no, we've got to share. You're a peacock. You got to fly. <laughs> let, me, let me spread my wing. <laughs> That's right. Um, man, so you you've you've had a, a lot of great stops along the way, um, and I we've heard it through your podcast. We've heard it through different conversations and different uh, presentations you've given you know, evolving as a baseball coach, um, you know, heard some of the things that you said, you'd go back and tell your former self and, and yeah. how you've evolved. You know, what are a couple of those things that you might be able to share with our listeners who, you know, might want to get into coaching, um, but mm-hmm. not ready to hang up their, their cleats yet and, and, and put on a coaching uniform? What kind of things can you, can you give them there? Oh, well, I think the, the journey in itself, I'll, I'll surmise it like this, uh, for 11 years, and I'm your own worst critic, and, and I fall into that category, but uh, every time I say this, I have a former player that hears it and texts me. He's like, coach, it really wasn't that bad. But to me, it was because I knew in the core uh, for 11 years, my heart was around the idea of I've got to do this for me. I've got to build up my career and we need to win these games so that I have that ring. I have that on my resume. I have that to help propel me to the next job. I need this for me. And it got, you know, I, caveat to that I spent eight years as an assistant I thought I'd look back I'm the worst assistant coach in the country because the whole time I wanted to be a head coach and so I'm battling for authority and I'm 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 wanting more responsibility and I don't know if half the time I was ready for it um but I learned a lot and so when I got to become a head coach I think a lot of that went to my head here's your opportunity to build a nationally recognized program and um I got really consumed my first practice I tried to win the national championship Literally, and and in year three, shocked that we hadn't won three of them yet, and it just it, it just comes back to it was it was ego driven, it was very uh, self centered, it was very uh, transactional um, in nature, and so I think, and, and again, I'll speak openly on this. I feel like God took me out of coaching and opened this opportunity at ABCA to remove me from that space where I did not have an identity outside of being a baseball coach. I, there was no, there are no hobbies. I still don't fish. I don't. I'm in the woods out here, and there's, I saw a deer uh, outside. I was drinking coffee, and he walked by, and I just gave him a little head nod. Like, I'm not going to get a gun that I don't have and shoot him. I'm, I don't do anything besides baseball, but I was more – my identity was wrapped up being a coach. Wins and losses defined my self-esteem. And uh, I really feel like I was pulled out of that to get into the, the, the American Baseball Coaches Association and serve and understand what servant leadership really is. What does it mean to die to yourself and remove your – your wants and desires and your, your ego out of the equation and serve others. And 
I found myself. I found fulfillment. I found happiness for the first time. I found this joy that it, it you'll always get what you're looking for when you put others ahead of you. you. You get to go along for the ride with them. But it's the fact that you're pushing them ahead of yourself. Um, I have this quote in, in my office and I look at it every single day. It's amazing what happens when no one cares who gets the credit. Wow. And th there's a yeah. reason that that knowledge stays around because it's real and it's true. Um, and so uh, through those four years, man, we did a lot of really cool things at the association. We, we, we built some different platforms, some connection points for coaches. Um, I think we, Butch Chafin always says, we kind of made learning cool again. So it, right. it, it, it really spotlighted the sharing aspect of the baseball community. It, it uh, maybe amplified the learning uh, of coaches and not being solidified in what you've taught for the last 20 years. Instead, challenge it. Listen to this new thought. Doesn't mean you got to take all the verbiage into your next practice. Just means don't let your thoughts settle in concrete. And so we did a lot of that. And then coming back into this program, man, it's, it's been totally different. I think, I think I, I'm, I might be hopefully arrived at, and I'm still working at this every day, but where these, these, these really successful coaches talk about a pivot point in their career. And I felt like I, I'm at my pivot point. I knew what went wrong. I knew where I was off track and I'm still trying to get better. No doubt. I'm nowhere near perfect, man. I, right. Frankly, I suck. I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to get better every day, but I've pivoted into a different direction of serving our players, loving our kids, building trust, showing trust. Um, and we'll talk more about that, but, but it's really approaching much differently. So if there is a coach, a younger coach or, or a, a player, because guess what? You guys have heard me say this. You are coaching a future coach right now. One kid on your team will either coach youth league, he'll coach high school, he'll coach college, he'll follow your path. So I try to know that walking into every classroom session, every meeting with our kids, and I try to inspire them, motivate them, show them that I'm – be transparent. Show that I'm imperfect. Show them my fault. Show them where I'm hurting. See them at my best. Let them see me at my best, but also let them see me at my worst. And uh, I think that that vulnerability – I love that word. I, I just I absolutely get goosebumps when I say that word. Vulnerability. If you're not coaching with it, you're missing the boat, and your kids are missing out on knowing who you are. And so – Take me for as I am. I accept you for who you are. Let's meet halfway. And let's see if we can't get better today. And that's the approach we're taking. Um, so if there is a young coach out there, man, I think to walk in at 22 and 23, lose your ego. It'll always be about serving players. It'll always be about the guys in front of you. It, uh, great hitting coaches recruit great hitters. It's not because you really know your stuff. You have great hitters. And so it's just recognition that the player will always run the ship. So I hope that gets to the crux of what you're getting. Oh, at. gosh, yes. Yeah, I mean, a matter of fact, I, I think I might have a, a, a year of eligibility left if I could come down there and play for you. <laughs> we love you have to say that beard, but I'd love to have you, man. It'd be great. <laughs> you couldn't give a better answer. <laughs> Appreciate it, John. Oh, All right. Oh, it's, man, there's so much to unpack there. I mean, it, it's what, you know, what you learn, and, and I think it fit very well – um, you know, coming from where you came from to getting into the ABCA and, and making learning fun again and making it cool. I mean, you're, yeah. that, that's really true because the content that you put out, you know, on this show, we're okay with name dropping and you have the Rolodex to do that, man. I mean, you've got all these guys and, and, and the beauty of it is I love seeing how it has helped you progress through the years and, and not from a personal me, 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 I'm going to gain standpoint, Sure. But really from if I help others and if I'm the one who's facilitating all of this knowledge, you know, I'm absorbing that as well. So ultimately you are making yourself better. And now you have yeah. the outlet, you know, you have the outlet to, to then expand that even more by getting back into coaching. You know, yeah. that, that's the, the, the neatness about what you've done um, because, you know, now even with, with what you're doing, and we'll get into to stick and ball later because I love it. Um, but it, it's really neat to see, and your impact is going a lot farther than I think you realize, because you're getting all these coaches that you're that you're impacting. You know, you're getting some guys sure. who might have had closed minds before, and you've been able to uh, get them to open their mind and understand. You know, feeling like you're the end all be all um, of, of a particular subject right. um, isn't exactly the way to go, and you're doing your your players a disservice, and then you're bringing on people that also echo that sentiment so now you've got coaches that are really opening up so you know the impact that you made I mean I know you made that impact on Jeff and and on me I mean Jeff you were up on the ABCA stage I mean tell us a little bit about that about you know how you and Sheets uh, work together and, and and how that came about 
Yeah, I mean, Sheets, dude, he won't say this. So I'll say it for him. <laughs> he is the godfather of podcasts and bringing baseball people together. Mm. Seriously. Say it again for the people in the back. Man, dude, <laughs> it's just a fact. It's just a fact. There is not a baseball person that is out there, scout, Division One coach that's won national championships, infield, you know, your Kai Cray is of the world. He, he's obviously in a league of his own, whatever. Yep. All those guys, you – are the godfather of bringing everyone together. You did that. Um, a lot of people say that, man. That is what you're known for is pulling everyone together. Obviously, there's so much more to you as a coach, and you're so willing to listen to others and all the knowledge that you have. I would love to come to one of your practices. As a matter of fact, I plan to. That would be awesome. Because I'm like that, man. I want to learn. Yeah. I want, I, want to, I want to make my practices better. Um, but as far as the ABCA, ABCA thing, getting on the stage, I, mean, I was a travel baseball coach up on that stage, first one ever. That's right. It doesn't happen without you and your belief in, in me, and I appreciate that. Um, you've been around us a little bit. And I, yeah. yeah, I owe that to you, but I, what I owe to you more is just, man, you've just pulled us all together and brought so much awareness to the game mm -hmm. and giving access to things that someone like – us or whoever would never have had access to before. So I, I, I appreciate that. Well, I, first of all, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm always humbled when people say all that. I, I, this is me choking back the ego. Cause I, that's, that's never, it's never been at the forefront of why I've been motivated to do anything that we've done is to gain anything personal from it. Again, I think if the service, oh, yeah, for sure. service of others is at the forefront, you get to just grab them by the belt and roll with them. Um, what's funny, you guys were talking through that and I was going back when, uh, <laughs> You know, it's in my first year at, at the association and I, somebody brings up the idea to start the podcast and I'm like, yeah, cause I can get behind a mic and I can talk and let's roll. And, you know, Rob and I talked about this and I, and I, I was in it when I started it for me. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna put my name out. I'm the guy and I can interview <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. And I listened to those episodes in a cringe and it got to the place where uh, number one, you arrive as an interviewer at a spot where you realize that it really is just a conversation. It's nothing more, nothing less. And if you sound robotic, you're going to sound robotic. So you got to just stay, you know, keep it in flow, keep it like a normal phone call. But what came from that is over the course of these conversations, the feedback. And you, you, again, I started a baseball podcast because I wanted to teach coaches how to be better at double plays and 30 episodes in, I realize it has nothing to do with hitting mechanics. It has nothing to do with being a better pitching coach. It has everything to do with being a better person. Like, and, and it just was smacking me across the face. Like, dude, Alan Jager hit me with this. It's not changing coaches. You're changing, you're positively changing the culture of coaching. And so the messaging and the tone and the, the stories and the transparency and the insight – is all making a coach evaluate the way in which he stands in front of his team. Right. And if you're doing that, then that is going to, again, elevate that program. It's going to elevate those players. The players are the ones that get the direct benefit of it. But because you're building a better player, you're now building a better, number one, future coach. You're building a better fan. You're, building, you're, you're, you're teaching the game in a way – I always say this to our kids. I, I, you, you never call me coach. Call, I'm a teacher at best. Like, I want to teach. I want to inspire you with the, with the word of baseball. I'm a baseball evangelist. I want to inspire you with the word of baseball so much that you see the game much differently, much differently than you did a year ago. And then for the course of your life, when you're a, a father and you're coaching Little League, you're going to approach that opportunity to impact 10 to 12-year-olds much differently than you would if you didn't play here. And so I think – you, you kind of get into that role. And I'm telling you, man, like the, the, the feedback, the DMs, like when I open my DMs, when you get into some of the text messages and, you know, these, these youth coaches, they, they reach, hey, man, if you want mine, I'd love to help you. Hey, here's my cell phone. Call me. I had a youth coach call me or not. He goes, you literally just gave your cell phone to a, a, a random dude. And I go, dude, I'll tweet it. it to me, it doesn't matter. I just want to help. I think at the, at the core of fulfillment is, well, what drives you? And for me, it's connecting. So you, you brought that. That, that point back. I love connecting people. There, that to me is like, oh, like that. That's your that's your trophy. Man, you've just done kidding. that. 
it, I, I absolutely love it. If a youth coach, a high school coach is looking for information from a pitching coach, text me. I'll give you three names right now. I'll send you their contact info. And when you reach out, they'll go, I guess you got this from Sheets. Like, right. I love that. That that fires me up. But like you, bring, being the first travel coach to go up on that national stage. And we all know what that stage means in the baseball world. And to, and to literally walk in front of those folks as the first travel baseball coach and, and speak, to me, was you're the perfect candidate. But more than that, that was a big moment for baseball, period. It's a big moment for that stage to be graced by the booming epidemic and, and movement inside of recruiting and inside of exposure and inside of baseball development, period, is you've got to expose some of these old codgers, pardon my age, uh, you know, yeah. differential here, but, like, you've got to expose these old codgers. He is a really good baseball guy. At the core of his organization, they run it the right way. He's about the right fit. They do it in development in mind. You need to hear that so you don't hear the other side of it, which is exposure, money, cash grab, ski mask operation. That's not who he is. That's why we chose him. And so, again, I just go back to that. Connecting those dots for people, man, I think that's the, um, that's the crux. And, and with that, we all win. And if we all win, we all get paid. You know, like if we're, that, that, that's the way I view it. Oh, yeah, awesome. I, I think you're absolutely right. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, you're able to connect the dots because I felt, you know, Jeff getting up there was super important, as you said, for baseball. Because, yeah. you know, we, we do have this stigma um, of, of, of all the things that you mentioned. And, sure. you know, one of the things we wanted to accomplish with this, um, with this game cast is really to, uh, to, to, to get that out there. You know, our first episode was talking with Jeff and Dan about how much we care, because a lot of times we can't express that, at least in the right manner. And, and we do, we, we want to help our kids. Um, that, that's, that's what's always driven uh, you know. the canes that a lot of people don't see. So, Let's let's talk about some things that might be able to help them. I mean, obviously, sure. getting into coaching and things like that. But let's let's talk about recruiting because it's an interesting time. Yep. Um, you know, evaluating talent, going out there when when the the switch gets flipped back on. What what are coaches looking for? What do you look for in players? What kind of things can can these kids expect uh, when when they see sheets and the GGC logo out there? <laughs> well, if you see me, you better come up and get a bro hug. Um, <laughs> That's right. And, <laughs> and I will be rocking a bucket hat for sure because again, I, I am I'm committed to I can no spots that. on this head. I, I man, totally I, with you. Anti cancer. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think when you when you get a chance to get back on the field. I think be cognizant of, of a few things. Number one, I could go into the all the metrics and the 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 uh, the times and all that stuff. It ain't about that. But what it is is that you have to know that over the umbrella of this conversation is that every player watching this, there is a right fit for you. Period. Good player, great player, bad player. There's a place for you to go play. One hundred percent. Now, when you ask. And just like these, all these kids in Gwinnett County and Fulton County, and when they wake up in the morning, their feet do not hit the floor, and they say, man, I can't wait to play at Georgia Gwinnett College one day. They, sit, they hit the floor and they say, I can't wait to be a Georgia Bulldog. I can't wait to go play at Tech one day. And we all know that, and we get that. And if they're a parent watching in this, hit pause, go over to your son and say, hey, give me your top three choices for school. And, you know, if he's there in Virginia, he's going to say, well, I mean, I want to go be a, a Cavalier for sure. And if that doesn't work out, I guess I'll go be a Hokie. And if that doesn't work out, I guess I'll go to UCLA because I like their stirrups. He's, he's going to name three of the top 25 Division I schools in the country. And mom and dad, bless your heart. Just like with my four-year-old who we don't even know if he's right-handed or left-handed yet. And I don't think he knows either. I'm still like he's the best four-year-old player in the country. Absolutely. We're, we're putting a Kane jersey on him, by the way. We'll, well you in the should. I'm just, if you really want fun in your stands out in the lawn chair in left field, you need to get me on your, on your roster. Um, but that's that, I, I get that. And I think so, so you need to understand that. And every player, I get that's where, because that's all that you've seen on TV. But at the same time you're watching Division I regionals, you know, the Division II World Series is going on. You think you can play at, at Virginia Tech? You may not be able to play at Catawba. And you don't even know who Catawba is. And you're going, I've never even heard of that school. Well, you should look them up because Jim Gant's doing a pretty good job of building a national championship level program. How about the University of Tampa? We're going to play at yeah. Tampa? How about all the kids that thought they could play at LSU and Georgia and Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech that couldn't play and have transferred to Tampa? So you're going to go play there? Probably not. Hey, I'm not trying so, to interrupt you, but – No, go right ahead. 
this is this is a segue just as a be quick. I played Division two ball too. Yeah. In my freshman year, where I'm at UNC Pembroke, and our head coach Paul O'Neill was yep. an assistant at VCU. Well, VCU's D1. Yeah. They're they're taking their bus down to play somewhere in South Carolina. They asked if they could practice at Pembroke. And they are out there practicing. And some of our guys were, like, help get in the field ready. And we're watching them practice. And um, mm-hmm. one of the uh, freshmen said to Coach O'Neill, he said, they don't look any bigger than us. He goes, they put their pants on the same way we do. He's like, they ain't that much better than us, you know. <laughs> you know to what you said, I mean, you, we, were, we weren't a bunch of scrubs. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I know we weren't. Division one or whatever, but we weren't a bunch of the Beach Belt Conference is a good conference. Bunch of sl- <laughs> we need a bunch of slouches. But go sure. ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. You you go back to uh, again. They, they don't know, and they don't know what they don't know. And so you know, even your your guys at Pembroke don't didn't understand the 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 talent level that you had on your current roster relative to other levels. And so um, I just think you you gotta. Almost if you go through this process and you come down to five schools that you really, really like and, it, it, you know, cover them up. It's like the, the shell game on the, on the street. So cover them up, but then lay out the pros and cons in terms of how it relates to you as a fit, which I'll come back to in a second. And you shuffle them around, you look at pros and cons, and you finally land at this one school and you turn open the shell and you find out, oh, that's the perfect fit for me at Georgia Gwinnett. And they play NAI baseball. Can't wait because it's about the fit. It's not about the level. And so when you come back to – Again, they know Division One, they know all that, but man, top level Division Two teams can walk into a lot of the mid major to low mid major Division Ones, and and probably run them off the field. Same way for some top level Division Threes, man. No scholarships, but the top ten of, of Division Three are is really good baseball. I was talking with one yesterday. It's really really good baseball. Uh, the top levels of NAI. I mean, for me to to come back after starting my career there, now to come back and see the talent level, man, I got a new appreciation for it. I'm telling you, not a lot of D1s are reaching out to us for a scrimmage game. And I don't mean that to be boastful or like throwing a jab. I'm speaking truth. I'm preaching to you right now. They ain't calling for a scrimmage because we got really, really good players. And so, and again, it's not even talking about junior college at the two level. So when you go through this, it's about fit. And so real quickly, I think, look at, I always talk about uh, prongs on a fork and every family has their own fork. And so you've got a few prongs to think about. You got to think about the academic piece. And that's like the furthest thing from what most kids want to talk about. But if you have a degree that you really want to go after, then you cannot go to a school that does not offer that degree, period. If you know you want to be an engineer, you can't go play at school X and get a business degree and hope to one day come back and be an engineer. You got to literally Google search and find the schools in engineering and target those. Academics have to be a fit. If you don't know your major, you're just like everybody else. I'm 39 years old and I still don't want know what I want to be when I grow up. So you're fine and you, you likely might change your major. So you're wide open to everybody. But the academic piece has to be a conversation. You got to think about the location because, again, there's co- players from all over the country listening to this. Well, in Georgia, there's a lot of people in Georgia that don't like to leave Georgia. So why open your doors to the Google search to a school in California when you know – your mom and dad don't have enough money to get on planes and come watch you every other weekend, and they really want to see you play college baseball. Don't look that far. Location. If you're um, a kid in Michigan and you hate the snow, then you shouldn't be really reaching out to schools that are near you. It snows in the summer up there. So you just got to be cognizant of location, like what fits geography-wise, geographical-wise into what, what works best to your family. Location matters. The social setting. There's some out there that can only function in – big situations or small school situations like low student to teacher ratio because you need academic support then you need to be looking at schools that are more private more smaller edge schools you put a kid that needs social structure into the university of michigan with seventy thousand students on campus they get lost in the shuffle you don't see the same person twice in a year and so it's just recognition big school small school from the social end really matters from the baseball fit you have to be able to fit their program. If you don't know, go watch them practice. That's the best way to show up and just watch the kids around the field and go, I see myself fitting in here. Like I, I could be on that field. I could wear that jersey. Watch them play a game. And if you really want to know what the level looks like, you've got to spend time on the baseball piece. Getting to know those coaches from the baseball end. Do you want to play for this guy? Uh, parents, you probably have the best insight into this because you have feel. 
I'm sorry, I love your 16 and 18 year old, but they don't have as much perspective as we do, but you have feels. No different than when you go to the used car guy and you can tell you're getting swindled. That's the same way with the baseball coach. Hey, I really care about your kid. Oh, it matters to me. Oh, coach, I don't see any pictures on your wall of former players. Those are the things you got to have feel for. The baseball has to fit. And the last one, again, if this is a prong on your fork, is the financial piece. You, if you have not had a financial conversation with your son, then you better start having one soon because when school X comes in, that's $60,000, and then school Y comes in and they're $5,000, your son needs to know where you fit in that whole spectrum. And so you cannot expect that a school is going to pay front to back every single dollar of baseball money. You've, in baseball, we've got to piece our stuff together. It's 25% baseball. It's 50% academic. It's about 25% financial aid, hopefully. And you're going to pay $25,000 either out of pocket or with a loan. If you're this person that says you're going to get through college and not take out one loan, I'm sorry, that ain't reality. This is, this is the way college athletics works, especially from the baseball piece. We're not football. We're not basketball. But you've got to decide what your fork looks like, how many prongs matter to you, and then start your search from there. So, again, that's an overview, and we'll, we can go some more details on that. Oh, that's – that's dude, that's exactly what – you know, what we should be talking about, you know, um, and, and I'm, I'm hoping some other programs, some other, you know, some other, some of our competitors are actually watching this because yeah. this information needs to get out. The, the stigma of, of travel baseball being bad, it needs to go away. You sure. know, the, the, the head knocking between, you know, the high school coach and, and travel coach, you know, ultimately we should all have the, the athlete's best interest at heart. And, and I, right. I know that, you know, we should all work together. I, I think we, we, a lot of people in our industry tend to get caught up in, hey, it's about me. You know, that's why I wanted to talk about your journey because I, I knew about, you know, you, you not making it about you. And I think more inside travel baseball need to make it not about me, but about, but about the athletes. So yeah. what do you look for at Georgia Gwinnett College? What do you look for in athletes when, when you go out this, this summer? So, so, the, the parents are looking on along those lines. This is, this is my fork. We're looking at it. We've talked about it. Yeah. Um, what's what's a good fit for you there at Georgia Gwinnett? Well, let me outline the program. And I, I really I, I relish the opportunity to, to brag on our program and, and what I was able to walk into. So we just finished up our eighth year, if you can call 2020 our eighth, our eighth season. Uh, but before that, we had seven years of existence. And we're, our school is the only, Georgia Gwinnett College is the only four-year institution built after the year 2000. Uh, so we're only 15 years old, and we're a small unit, but we're a Division One campus, man. We're set up. Uh, it, it looks just like a small mid-major Division I uh, campus and facility. Program being seven years old. It's our athletic department from start to finish is only that old. We have six sports. All six sports compete for the national championship. Last season, all six sports competed at the final site of their respective national championship. Um, I'm, I'm in an athletic department with a bunch of dudes, and I mean, like, I can go talk winning, recruiting, evaluation, building culture with some of the best of the best. Our athletic director, Dr. Darren Wilson, is a rock star. Big piece of the reason I took this job. I was ready to work for someone that was a true leader and could really mentor me and guide me and move me and make me better. And he is a thousand percent that person. Our program being seven years old, we've averaged 47 wins per year. Um, so it's on a level that winning is expected when we roll out. Um, we've got, uh, we always embrace the target. There's a target on our back for being such a young program to win at the level that we do. Uh, when teams play us, and I mean this in, in every respect, if they beat us, they dogpile. And uh, we dogpile once a year. It's hopefully when we win the national championship. So it's a little bit different perspective for me having that target and embracing it and understanding it. But when you've been to the World Series three times in seven years and you've put your team uh, ever since we've been able to be inside the national poll, We've been ranked inside the top 10. Um, so we've been finished this year, 23 and two. We're on a 22 game winning streak. Really liked our team, really loved our guys. Man, we were in a great place. Uh, finished third in the country. And we just hope that that's only the beginning of where we're going. And so 21 players in seven years have signed professionally. We had six kids signed professionally off the 2019 wow. team. Can't say enough about Brad Stromdahl and the staff that was there before. He's now at Georgia State. And what they did building this program, um, but it's $5,800 in tuition. So in state, $5,800, we will not break your pocketbook. Um, and we're looking for, again, really great people, number one, because we're going to do it with great people. But you got to be able to play the game. I've been through this a lot. Like, Rob and Jeff, I think you guys will appreciate this. I think 
for my background being at other four year stops, much different than, than Gwinnett, you know, in my heart, I want to build it off for your guys. We all know that if you're building a program, you got to have that consistency, but you got, you need to have that dude that just bleeds green and he's done it for three, four years and then he graduates and, you know, and, and but that's not the world we live in, man. When you're a, a top level NAI program, who we have to compete against, we have to almost mimic their recruiting cycle as well. We have to be on the same front. When you match up a division one kickback player who's a senior in the four hole for the team across the way, and you're matching that up with an 18 year old that just got out of high school that's living his first college baseball experience, it usually doesn't go well for the Grizzlies. And so we're looking at this going, uh, where I walked in said, we're going to balance our class. We're going to have four, you know, four year guys, but plus some two year JC D1 kickback. And uh, that's just not the case. We're, we're, we've shifted more into a two year situation, uh, immediate fit, best player available. Um, and so when you look at that, this class right now will probably be between 12 and 14 players. We're going to have one high school player in that class. And, wow. and, and, and that's probably the route we're going to go for a little bit. So guys that are reaching out, Man, I'm, I'm, I'm always interested, and I love having a conversation. And if you're better than what we have, dude, I'll hear you out, and I'll talk you through it, and we'll try to get you in, in, in green and gray. But at the same time, if you're not, I'll probably try to push you to junior college so that we can keep an eye on you and we can watch you. Because, again, our class right now of those 14, roughly 11 of those are from junior colleges, and the other two are, are Division One kickbacks. And so we're, we know that, again, in this space, and you guys know this as well, so many are, are really at 13, 14, 15, 16, jumping in to programs. And then you find out at 18 and 19 that it wasn't all it was cracked up to be. You fell in love with the sweatshirt. You didn't fall in love with the coaches and the situation. And then you're calling Jeff and Rob saying, hey, I need a new place to play. Well, 502-767-7680, you call Georgia Gwinnett because we are the perfect place for a guy that has seen that upper level SEC, Power 5, high level brand of baseball. And when you come to see our NAI situation, you're going to realize it's not much different. We run our program just like a division one program, our touch points, our full-time strength and conditioning coach, my associate head coach, our, our, our full-time pitching coach. We have another full-time assistant. We also have three other assistants on staff, director of player development. We're doing it at a very high level. And so our situation uh, is, is set up for us to keep winning. Uh, but more than that, we are in the development of people and we coach the person the student, and then the player. And the personal piece for us is everything. Our job is to put more Grizzlies out into the world that are not meant to go work for a company. They're meant to go run a company. And we, we work it in that respect. And so it's all about the relationship. It's all about the people. And, again, we're going to win with great people here. So how many times would you have said any of those when you first started coaching? I think I would have talked about the winning for sure. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> because I knew that was going to get me where I needed to go. Um, yeah, I'm telling you, it's it's so much different. It, it's it's yeah. going to sleep at night last night, and I'm thinking about my kids. I'm thinking about our players. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to do a video deal to them today in our group message and have them come back and, and put their own video in. Because we haven't seen each other's faces in a, in a while, man. It's just a – Thanks. I think when you come back to this, I, I, I walked into this role – and a lot, of, again, took a lot of area of what we talked about earlier, those conversations with the best of the best. And I've really molded the approach of building this program with a lot of that stuff uh, factoring in. But the one thing that I knew personally I needed to make a personal stance on is I never leave any opportunity that I'm in front of a player or we're in front of the team or we're having a conversation where I don't tell them that I love them. And I end every huddle with love you guys. I end every conversation with the love you, man. Um, and it's, it's uncomfortable at first for the 18 year old and he, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, love you too. And then eventually <laughs> it gets to the place where we can look each other out. I go, man, I love you. I do. I'm, yeah. I'm willing to say the things I'm saying. I'm willing to shoot you straight because I do love you. And if I'll be the one person in your life that'll shoot you straight because mom and dad, that sometimes we have, we have clouded contacts on and we, we see yeah. things one way. Well, guess what? I'm the unbiased view in the room and I'm going to tell you exactly where you stand, what I see, what we have to be better at. Um, what I need to hold you more accountable to, where I need to be better. Like, it, it's a completely transparent relationship, but it comes back to love, man. I would not have said that 100%. Right, right. I, you know, and I, same boat, I, I never would have said that. And I find myself, you know, coaching at a high school. Um, I say that to my players all the time. Yeah. And, and it, it, it's even weirder with a, you know, 15, 16-year-old kid. They look at you a little <laughs> side-eyed. Of course. 
but but now you you know you have them up for a couple of years and you know they're the ones saying it you know you walk by them when they're throwing they're like hey coach love you and, and it's just cool to see the transformation yeah. and, and the trust that that's earned from it so yeah. you know that's that's really cool um you know i i know you know with all those guys with no hair you know we're, we're evolving um, from from the whole player thing, from balding or evolving. You know, oh, I, I said balding. evolving. I may not have, have enunciated clearly, um, but oh. but what, balding. Um, yeah, it, it's neat to see the transformation. You see the transformation of your players, but also yeah. too, you know. And I think you touched on this with with you know your wife and your kids. You also have a better life at home. You know, you learn yeah. to be a better person. Oh, you don't man. take things from the field. Um, you know, it, how how has that impacted your life? You know, be. To elaborate Look, on that a little bit. I'm going to say this, and this is the disclaimer. I don't want anyone to hear this as it went, it's gone really good. So you should go have kids. Like <laughs> I'm not saying that. Look, before this interview started, I had to break up a fight between my four year old and my two year old and uh, change a, a poopy diaper. And then my mm -hmm. wife looking at me like, hurry up. Like th that's, <laughs> that's know. reality. Yeah. <laughs> Just got that going on too. Yeah, so. that's, that's, yeah, that's reality up there. Um, I'll say this, man, I, I would never, I would never have arrived at this without having kids. And again, the timing of getting out of coaching, we had just found out we were pregnant with Coop. And so again, pulling me into a different role, having me step back, now I get to raise a kid and I get to see the, the, the pure joy of, of, of raising children. Um, yeah, I approach this much differently. I mean, I, I, it, it's funny because you, you know that there's someone else's kids, but until you have your own, you don't view them as someone else's kids. Right. Until you have your own children, you don't view these players in your role as their stepfather. You don't view it that way. You can't. I'm sorry. You just can't. Unless you grew up and you had a stepfather. Yeah, maybe. I'll, I'll, have, I'll let you have that one. But when you have your own kids at home and you realize that the way in which I talk to this kid, what I want someone talking to my son this way, you know, we had, we had some rough conversations. We had a couple players that, um, you know, one, I just, I felt like wasn't a great fit. One wasn't going to class. And so we had, and I had those two conversations and I, I, I actually told them both. I said, I'm just letting you know that, you know, five years ago, this conversation would be going much differently. I'd have a much different tone. There'd be some anger. There'd probably be some choice words made. I probably wouldn't have worried about salvaging a relationship, but look, I love you. And I want what's best for you. And so I'm going to handle this much differently. And I, I, those guys walk out and I close the door and I just reflect like, holy smokes, man, your kids made you better. Because I realize that, number one, they are going to go back and talk to their families. But more importantly, one day, you know, Coop is going to miss class. And he's going to come into his coach's office. And I want that coach to hopefully handle it better, even better than I did. But I want him to handle the same respect and, and care and love. Uh, so, yeah, it changes everything, man. Yeah. Jeff, so you have three young kids at home. How, how has that impacted you as, as a coach, from a coaching perspective, Jeffrey? I mean, the same exact thing he just said. Um, and you can't say it any better. I mean, yeah, when you're young and you don't have kids, like she's just said, you cannot have the same perspective. But I got dogs. Don't, don't uh, even, no, you know what I'm saying? Don't, same, don't try that. Please don't. <laughs> Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's been a, very good for me. Yeah. Very good for me. Especially, you know, I have a daughter. I have a six-year-old daughter and two, two boys. I tell you, it ch changes everything. It changes, uh, you know, res respect for women, right? Yeah. yeah. You have a daughter. I Absolutely. Mean, you know, I, I want somebody to treat my daughter that way. Uh, and the boys, oh, man, big, big difference. Everything she's just said is it's just spot on. I, I would just be spitting it out the same exact way. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I know. I, I, I've had uh, talks with college coaches or, or, excuse me, high school coaches and, and guys that do what we do in the travel ball, you know, scene, you know, about having kids and how big of a role that plays in sheets. So that was perfect with the dog comment because that's always their comeback. I got a dog. I got a dog. Yeah, well, you can go leave your dog for the weekend and yeah. throw some food out and you're fine. Don't try doing that with a kid. Don't leave your two-year-old in the house for the weekend. It's like I'll, throw the, I'll throw this out there, and it's off of what you were talking about with Georgia Gwinnett. We played there back one of the first years that it was open at the Perfect Game Tournament. We were at yeah. the Little Wood Bat, and we, were, uh, we threw a kid that day, and there must have been, I don't know, 50, 60 scouts behind home plate. And sure. I remember driving pretty far to the game because we were staying in Marietta. 
I mean, it was it was it wasn't like driving East Cobb, right? I mean, forty five. Yeah, well, all of us yep. know that tournament. You know, if you're staying in Marietta and you got a game at East Cobb, you know, it's five minutes. But that day, it was a forty five minute ride, and we got there, and I was like, whoa, yeah, place is nice, different. Like, I'm gonna piggyback off everything you said. Yep. It's like this place is nice. This is a stadium feel. Yep. This is like seven years ago. Uh, I remember we walked. I think I saw the weight room too that day. Yeah. And the cage set up, I mean, wow, like seven years ago. Like, we were all impressed. All our guys were committed to Vanderbilt, you know the deal. Sure. South Carolina, LSU, et cetera. And they're all like, man, what, what is this place? Yep. Um, so, I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm not the head coach there. I'm not selling your school. I'm simply outsider saying it's real. Like, the place is nice. and. Right. It's, it's legit, man. I'll just say this, man. When it, it didn't take much convincing, you know, obviously to take the job, but um, the minute I got there, I, it's funny because you reflect, and I got an office that overlooks our field. I've never had that. Nice and, field. Uh, um, it's um, the, the surface you walk, the, it's the best playing surface I've ever been on. It drains, Beautiful. it can pour down rain. We're playing in an hour. Like it is silly good. Oh. And so, um, you know, we walk out, and, and of course, you know, my, my assistants, they're like, man, you, why, you, you walk and you pick weeds. Like, you, you do all that. And I'm like, because if this is the best field in the country, if this is the best small school college baseball field in the country, then it'll be pristine. And you'll never see a weed. And you wonder why I drag the track every day and drag the infield. And we edge every other week. And we, we do these things because, man, if this is the best of the best, then when someone like you shows up and they get to see it for the first time, we're going to remove all doubt and uh, it, it's no different than the way we're going to build our team. And when we play and our, our level of grit, our level of, of really attacking, um, we have some really cool moments this year. And then luckily social media caught some of them. Um, that's the essence of our team, man. Like complete trust, letting players be players, letting athletes go be athletes. We, we coach the snot out of you. If I get on you to 10, I'm going to love you to 20. But when it's time to go play the game, it's your opportunity to go play the game. My job is to get out of your way. And we spent a lot of time on that, Jeff. So, again, I just come back to you, man. Like, yeah, the field's awesome. But, man, you got to have really good players to make that field look even sexier. Oh, and man, so we're I just look, by look, that look, the best. I, that's, that's my language there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let, let me ask you this, Sheets. And, again, sure. uh, we're kinda, I kind of want to stick onto your coaching. Uh, you know, with all of that being said, do you find yourself coaching less during the games now, you know, than you did before, um, or or how does how does that look? I, I would say that I am more of a conversationalist, um, but you know, I, I, it's funny. I coached this entire year and never raised my voice once, and our players were waiting for it, and I had plenty of moments I could have, but I've just I'm going to hold that. If I can hold it in for another year, I'm going to do it because I think it's more. You got to realize that to me, it, 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 the, the point, the teaching matters to me more than us screwing something up. You need to understand why and why it's important. And I want my players to run the show. And I, I push them in that direction to run the show. I think we were working in a place, Rob, this year, man, again, winning some games where I was getting close to the point where they didn't need me. And that's what right. you want, especially for 18 to 20 year olds. I want them at some point to just, coach, we don't need you. Yeah. It's almost like we got to a place where we're, we're calling the, 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 the steel. We're calling the drag bunt, and the and the players just like, I know, yeah, I understand, it's time, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, I think man, anyway. it's gonna make me cry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh. we, we can't get out on a field, and you're sitting here talking about this. Man, I'm telling you, it was I oh. had the most fun. It was the most fun I've ever had as a coach. And so, yeah, when you when you come back to it, I am. Uh, I'm having conversations in, in the dugout with, with either the guy in the hole or a guy that's not playing, and we're standing there and we're all talking it through. And, and we're just, what are you seeing? Well, I'm seeing this, and, hey, I'm feeling like and, – and it helped – I'll tell you what it helped me, if there's a coach out there, it helped me manage the game much better. And uh, I did not buy into the emotional roller coaster of baseball. Baseball is a game we always talk about. There's this huge ball of momentum out there over the pitching mound, and literally with each pitch it starts moving back and forth. And then you get a hit and then another hit and a walk. And now that dugout has grabbed that ball and they're holding on to it. And uh, we talk about that emotional flow. And so our players, I try to not, you know, help them under, you know, don't go down that rabbit hole, man. It, 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 it looks just like this and it won't be fun for you. And when it goes south, it's going to really hurt. So you just try to stay consistent. Well, I was Johnny consistent as a coach. I stood in the same spot. 
I leaned up against the same wall. I, I fist pumped one time, and it was because it was a big moment, and a kid hit a home run, and I knew he was going to hit a home run. And it was that was the one moment I let it out. Other than that, Johnny Cool, because I think our kids, I wanted them to have that from the coaching staff down, that it's not emotional, stay consistent. And what it helped me do was see the game uh, not only at bats ahead, but innings ahead. I could manage the moments. I could manage the conversations. I could, you know, a kid strikes out, well, he's upset. And probably walking back to the dugout is not the best time to have a conversation about his approach. And so it allowed me to calmly go, got it, here's some feel, check him out, he needs more time, comes in from defense, give him a glance, he ain't ready yet. Two innings later, he comes back, he's now on the hole. Hey, so we, as we approach this at bat, let's take a much different approach to what we're getting ready to do here and try to build him up with confidence. I managed it, to me, so much better and I, I, I hope I hold on to that because it was fun. And I got a chance to, like, look across the way. And you, you do whatever you want to do in your dugout. I'm going I'm to give you a nod and a wink because I'm having fun. I get to watch my kids play the game. It's like every parent. Your job should be able to get in the car and not talk about his, his, his 0 for 4. Hey, I love to watch you play the game. That's what I try to give my kids every single time we play. I just love to watch you compete. I'm going to stay out of your way, and I'm going to love to watch you compete. And, by the way, you should have stole third there. But other than that, I love to watch you play. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. You know, the, the, it, it's really cool to, to see how coaching has evolved and how hearing the humbleness in your voice and, and, and you know, listening to the way that you talk about your players, it's very evident. I mean, li you know, there's, there's a difference between reading about it and learning and then applying it. Um, yeah. in, in every aspect of your life, you know, from right. even in business, you know, I'm a business guy and, and um, it, it's, it's always the challenge is applying it and, and turning over that trust to your players, right? Sure. But when you speak to them in that manner and you're, you're being that selfless and that transparent and that vulnerable, it, it allows them to buy in. It gives them permission to then help hold you accountable to those things. Yes. And, and you, and you responded very well by, making sure that you're that, that, that consistency that you expect out of them. So it's, it's, yeah. it's a really neat dynamic there. Um, you know, you get people onto campus, you get uh, a freshman or, or, or Juco transfer or D1 uh, bounce back, whatever. Yeah. How do you get them to buy into that? How do you get them? Because you're, you're all singing from a different sheet of music. You awesome. know, I might have had a, a screamer and a yeller. I might have had yeah. you know, a coach that was just disengaged or whatever the case may be. You know, already wrote me off because I went to a D1 and, gosh, it didn't really work out. How do you get them all on that same page? So, uh, and this is, again, I, I hope I can offer this lesson to anyone that gets into coaching. Um, the first, when I first got the job, got it on a Friday, and I, you know, knew I had it about a week ahead of time, and, the, the assistant had sent me every single alumni and then current players' phone numbers. And that Friday, after I got in the car from the press conference, roughly around 5 o'clock, I called every single player that day. Um, and I, I made that a priority, that I'm calling you. Whether I get a voicemail or not, I'm calling you. But more importantly, the message and the, and the tone was exactly the same. It almost, I could have recorded it and put it up to the phone. And it was this, my wife was like, you were literally saying the same thing. And I said, I'm doing it intentionally because they need to hear the same message. The message they need to hear at this point is, I don't know you. I didn't recruit you. I couldn't pick you out of a crowd. I, you must be a good player because you're already a Grizzly. But other than that, I don't owe you anything and you don't owe me anything. But you know what? Because you're in that uniform, I'm going to owe you everything. And I want to meet you halfway on this. You're my guy. No matter what, I got your back. You tell me to stab a stranger, I'll stab a stranger for you. You're my guy. But again, when I show up, when I show up, you better meet me halfway. I'm going to see you in, in, in two months. You better meet me halfway. And it started there. And so on a daily basis, whether it's our classroom sessions or it's uh, through the fundamentals we're teaching during training, it comes back to this place, man. It ain't about you. And look, I, 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 number three, uniform. One day, somebody... 40 years from now, when I die around in the guy at third base, they're going to bury me in that coaching box and another guy is going to wear the number three. Like our best player, number one, 0, 0.00 ERA, 60 strikeouts and 30 some innings, like hashtag left handed 93 dude, somebody's going to wear number 11 next year. I'm sorry. There's no statues being built here, man. We're going to keep moving forward. So 
I talk about that, man. I try to kill the ego right away. I try to, you know, I know you're a really good Juco player. Sweet, man. So was he. So was he. So was he. And so was he. Now find a way in the lineup. Yes. And, no one, and no one's going to listen to you complain about not playing here. And, and so, and, and again, that's kind of as a coach, I, I, I attack some of those moments. And I went at them a little bit, like, to make sure they understand, like, hey, man, you can, you can moan all you want. It ain't getting you any closer. And by the way, I don't miss a beat. So you think I don't notice the eye roll? You think I don't notice the dugout? I, you don't think I don't notice who you're hanging out with and the fact that all three of you guys aren't playing? You think that you're on that end of the dugout, not this end of the dugout? Like, dude, I'm telling you, it, it goes back to recruiting. Like, you have to be aware that we don't miss a beat. And the same way for coaches, players don't miss a beat. Right. They're smarter than we'll ever give them credit for. But, I mean, you better give some credit to this old dude down at the other end of the dugout. Because I, that's my job. If we lose, I have to sell my house. It's a much different dynamic at play here. So I need to evaluate each and every one of you and try to keep you on the, on, on the same page. And so we spent a lot of time, Rob, back to your question. We spent a ton of time talking about building a unit. And, and, and look, calling the game out in the way that it is. It's an individual game wrapped up into a team setting. And so you have individual responsibility. And your responsibility is to get up at 6.30 and go to weights. Your individual responsibility is go to your 8 and 9 o'clock classes. Your individual responsibility is to get in the weight room. Uh, I'm sorry, get in the locker room, get changed, and be at classroom before 129 so we can start at 130. Your job is to train from 2 o'clock until 5 o'clock and get the best out of yourself that day and reach your full potential. That is what the opportunity you have. And if you don't fit that, you can't hang out. We have a sign in our locker room says the pride and winning tradition of the Georgia Gwinnett, Georgia Gwinnett College baseball program will not be entrusted to the weak or the timid. If you're scared, if you're nervous, if you're shy, you better move past it, honey, because it ain't stopping. You got to be fearless. You have to attack. You better be confident. You better embrace the target. You better work harder than most. You're trying to go play professional baseball. So is the same guy at Ole Miss. And the scouts in our area have to decide, do they want you or the kid from Ole Miss? You better show up today. And so, again, you just come back to all those things. Like, that, to me, kills the ego. It forces people to be selfless. Um, you know, egos don't last. And, 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 and we'll find a way to move past you. We're going to find a group of guys that are selfless and they want to be part of what we're doing here because it's always about the program. Always will be, always has been, and, and we'll never stop. Seriously, I'm pumped right now. And, and I've wanted to say this. I wanted to say this several times, but this is certified video gold right now. <laughs> Since you have audio, I, I can't take yeah. audio. I'll take, take video. video. I'll give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Certified Zoom gold. <laughs> Dude, gosh, man, awesome. it's so good. Um, so now we can transition to your audio gold. Well, tell us what you tell us what you're doing now, man. I mean, you're shut down. I know you're reaching and loving your players, and you're yep. getting extra time with you know with your family, which that sounds like it's going well with the diapers and breaking up the fights and being a referee. Um, dude, that sounds awesome. Um, yeah. And I say that because my kids are older, so I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> I, I know where you've been. I just could not imagine having a child, you know, young children during this. Jeff uh, shares his stories. Dan oh, okay. shows, shares their stories. Um, I just sit back and laugh. Um, <laughs> what are you doing now, man? You're educating, and, and, and gosh, tell us. Tell us about some stick and ball stuff, man. I'd love to. So um, I, I've always viewed my role at ABCA as the coach's coach. And um, it, platforms that we provided were, in, in essence, to coach coaches, to help them out, share some perspectives, and, and help them grow and learn. And, and certainly, I was long for the ride, man. I was, I was taking notes right there with you. Um, yes, yeah, so we built the, the ABCA Calls in the Clubhouse podcast. We got 140-some uh, episodes before I left there. And, and that just, for me, laid the groundwork of, man, I don't know if I want to live another day and not do a podcast. I, I, I love them. I, I, love I, had to, I had the withdrawals from it, buddy. Oh, I'm and telling I know, you. I know, I know coaches across the country did. You and me both. I was, <laughs> I was fighting. I was scratching the same itch, man. Like it just, it, there's something to be said about this. We, we listen with our eyes, but we feel with our ears. And when you can put in earbuds and listen to someone, you know, talk passionately. Like if, if you closed your eyes and just listened, man, I hope that my passion is coming through into your into your ears because that's the way that you feel I, I miss that connection i miss the conversation i miss having those those touch points with people it was making me it really did it made me better 
um, as a communicator, as a learner, as an educator, like all those things. So it took, you know, I didn't know how I was going to transition out of it. And when I took the job, you know, my Darren knew that, that that's something I still wanted to do. And he goes, but man, just be smart about it. Like, you know, you manage your time, you know, certainly we want to build a championship program here, but manage your time. And if you can get it done, I support you hundred percent. Well, the group at stick and ball TV. And if you haven't checked this out, guys, please go, go give them a look. Stick and TV is the main site. Uh, we've also got stick and ball TV.com. That's where we're running our $10 special for three months of train at home training. Um, they reached out and they're like, Hey, you know, and I'd already talked to him a little bit at ABCA. Like, Hey, would you be interested in running a podcast? And I'm like, Thank God you asked. I would, I'll start it tomorrow. And we kicked it off uh, right as uh, 2019 ended. I think we're 20 some episodes, getting close on, on 20 some episodes. And um, same idea, man, connect with the best of the best and, and talk through where they're at in their journey and uh, gain their knowledge and, and, and get them to talk through some stuff that's a little off topic. We talk about faith. We talk, uh, we talk growth. We talk very transparently. Man, you had a, an episode number nine with Butch Thompson from Auburn and if anybody listened to that, you cried and I'm interviewing him and I'm crying and we stopped and I edited it out because it, it is so powerful. Um, episode 44 of the ABCA podcast, Matt Deggs is the one that people always reference back to as powerful. Butch's is as powerful. And uh, yeah, absolutely. So we're rocking, we're rocking with the podcast. Well, this time I'm off for all back to your question, like we're two times a week now. So now oh. we're, we're Mondays and Thursdays, two episodes a week, which I, I got plenty of free time. Um, and then, you know, this face-to-face, -face, these Zoom calls. So we started those, and we've gone twice a week. We just had our second one last night, and we had uh, close to 670 coaches all on the same Zoom call talking with Kai Carrera from the San Francisco Giants and Eric Backich, head coach of the University of Michigan, Mondays and Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern time, six out on the West Coast. A podcast comes out that morning. Listen to the podcast in the morning. Get ready for the Zoom call at night. But if you're a coach, if you're a player, if you're a parent, I just I can't say enough about what's happening at Stick and Ball TV. Just go check it out. We've got an app. Uh, again, stickandball.tv. It's basically Netflix for baseball. And you search hitting, and there's a thousand hitting videos. You search infield play. You search strength and conditioning, all the various aspects of the game. And there's more being added daily. And we're also going to branch into softball. And so the whole thing is going to blow up. Stick and Ball TV is going to be around for a long time. And um, – I'll say this on air because I, obviously I love you guys and you know exactly where I'm going with this. Could there be a convention coming down the road some point? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Going there. We're, we're blowing, we're taking this thing to the nth degree because we, at our core, it's not a cash grab. At the core, we're about growing people. Our mission is to grow baseball. Our mission is to further coaches, players, and parents and, and really bring us all together and build a community. That's where we're going with it. I mean, I really do. That's I really cool. to be talking about it. That's yeah, nice. that's really cool. You know, one of the things too, if I were a or if I were a player and starting my recruiting journey, um, I might watch those and maybe find out a little bit about philosophy, about how the coaches right. coach. You know, what their mindset is. I mean, typically, if somebody's on the the Stick and Ball TV uh, podcast or on the Zoom calls, they're willing to share about them, and and you know, you yeah. peel back a lot of layers so you can really get to see what core beliefs people have, such as the, the Butch Thompson uh, episode. That it was, it was powerful. It's and if powerful. I'm somebody, you know, that's considering going to play for Coach uh, Thompson, yeah. that's probably an episode that I'd watch to see to make sure I, you know, I'm a good fit there. So, yep. you know, there's another angle that, that players should be using if they're not with, with stick and ball is, is consuming as much content as they can that's to it. make sure they're a right fit. Can't back that up enough. How about that? We had a hitting trio. We had Alan Kunkel from South Florida, <laughs> and we had Brian Peters from Long Beach State, and we had Mike Clement from Ole Miss. And yeah. it was one of the most, for me, powerful hitting conversations I've ever had. And I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm evaluating our offense, and we're going to make some some changes. And we're, I always looked at the 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 culture that we're building here. I could I could fire hose them to the face or I could tear step this and, and really look at it at the end of year three, is it as close to solidified as I can get? So I, I, I was smart about what we put in this year and obviously we'll amplify that next year and in year three will be even better. And I needed that conversation. Well, let me just tell you, if you are a player and you're listening to this podcast and I know hitting, that's the, that's the topic you can't talk about. Infield play, there's no egos. Hitting, totally different story. And if you listen to that episode as a 16, 17, 18 year old, and you hear these three talk about how they run their offense and how they communicate with players and 
the priorities they hold true inside how they score runs and win games. And you go on a visit and you ask the next coach, hey, what do you guys uh, do offensively? And he doesn't give you anything close to that, then you run. Like, that's where I come back to. Now you're getting the best of the best talk like this. And when you ask the conversation of the offensive coach and it doesn't even come close and that ain't you, you better run. You better go find somebody that's going to teach. Somebody's going to get to the nth degree and understands why they do what they do. Not, well, I was taught this in high school. And, hey, I've always had success doing it this way. And, yeah, it's my 15th year and it looks just like year one. That ain't the guy you're looking for. You're looking for a growth mindset. And so, yeah, you're dead on. From the player perspective, you will hear how the best of the best communicate. And you can take that into your recruiting process, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think that's something that, that people do need to consume. You know, we have all this time. Should start mm -hmm. consuming that content and, and being able to apply it to them. You know, I think they should listen with a different set of ears than, oh, wow, this is really cool. I get to hear Sheets talk and, and, and he's really good. But I, I want to get to the nitty gritty and the details and pull out what Sheets that's believes right. and figure out whether or not I'm a good fit for him. Because I think that's one of the things in, you know, circle back in a recruiting, I think that's one of the biggest things that, that kids, um, and, and for the most part they are kids, uh, forget is finding that good fit. That's right. Um, you know, I, I, I know Jeff and, and I talk about it with the kids that we interact with is making sure it's a good fit for you. Um, you know, and I, I think in every respect with regards to the Canes and even this Cane cast, you are the right fit, man. You are the real deal. You know, I, I know we, you know, we, we uh, share a good relationship on social media and things like that. And, oh, yeah. and we both love Dave Matthews, so we've got that going for us. We got to pull Jeff onto that train. Jeff's, Jeff's yeah, fine. Jeff's in. I like a Are little you? Dave Matthews. Yeah, he's in. And we share the same haircut too. So. <laughs> <laughs> same haircuts. <laughs> but dude, you I are. I think we should all get an apartment together. I'm just going to put that out there. It's gonna... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how Chelsea would appreciate. That. <laughs> well, all the wives can live together with the kids, but the men, we have our own apartment. I'm just saying. There you go. Oh there man, you go. that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, we can do podcasts all day. We can do yes, we, we could. can do Zoom conferences with everybody. It's Zoom from each other's rooms. It'll be awesome. <laughs> Well, if college baseball was playing and pro ball was was on, I think we'd have like 10 TVs set up and watching different <laughs> games, but we don't have that going for us right now, guys. No, so, a lot of replays. Yeah, a whole lot of replays. Well, Sheets, any parting messages for Canes kids that are out there? So we've got, you know, we've got youth teams. We've got um, yep. all the way up to high school. Um, we try to close each episode out with maybe a little bit of advice that you might have for them. You know, whether it's um, – you know, whether it's for the youth kid or the, the, the high school kid, you know, you've seen a lot. You talk to a lot of great baseball people. What kind of advice could you extend to, to kids in our organization right now? I'm, I'm feeling really drawn to say this. Um, and, and you're going to hear it. it just, this is not a motivational speech because I hate those. They're, they're fleeting. They last for three minutes. But if whatever your motivation is, whatever your chip on your shoulder is, whatever you – play the game aggressively, play it hard, play it relentlessly, play it fearlessly, whatever that is, write it under your hat, sharpie it on your arm. Like here's the, at some point this tunnel is going to close and you don't get it. And God bless you. You don't get it. Like you don't understand that it's coming soon. For some of you, it's going to come at 18. It's just part of it, man. For whatever reason, circumstance, decision, it's going to end at 18. Some of you, it could end at 20. Two years of JUCO, two years at a four-year, you decide to hang them up. Some of you are going to play four years of college ball at 22, 23, and it's going to shut down on you. Some of you are going to play pro ball, and you may get, you know, a couple years in, in A ball. Some of you may go get a cup of coffee, and you're up for six or seven, and some of you may play for 20. But at some point, just like in Moneyball, at some point they tell you to, to walk away. And my, my, my best thing to offer and what I try to offer my players is that, dude, attack every single day. Do it as hard as you can. And within that, you're not only pushing the, the extent of your God-given abilities, but more importantly, you're starting to become who you're supposed to become. You're, you're going to move yourself towards your full potential. And if that isn't what we're all here for, then I'm not sure you're on the right Canes cast. Like, this is about fulfilling exactly who you're supposed to be and who to the extent in which you're supposed to be. We always talk, and I take this from Coach Garrido, the goal in coaching is to coach in a way that your players one day have the courage. And I love that word, man. Talk about goosebumps again. You have the courage 
to one day come into life and act on your own thoughts and ideas, like to truly lead your own path. And I think you only get that if you're attacking each day. If you want to be a sheep and you want to hang back in the crowd, then someone's going to dictate your path for you. If you want to be a lion, if you want to lead from the front, if you want to be, again, dude, it's no different. This face ain't that pretty. I get it, but I'm willing to put it out on screen because I'm willing to lead. You may not like it. You may not get down with it. Some dad's already turned me off because I'm too forward. He didn't want me talking to his baby boy that way. There's also some dad and some mom going, that's exactly who I want my son to play for. Then you're someone you should reach out to. I'd love to hear from you. So I think you just come back to attacking each day with a fever, playing each game, running hard 90s, playing the game relentlessly. There's something to be gained from that. It's no different than attacking life. A buddy of mine asked me, dude, why you're doing so much right now. Why would you keep doing that? Because this is the only opportunity I have right now. And I'm going to attack it. I, if I could go to three Zooms a week, I would. My wife would murder me in my sleep. But we're going to do two. We're going to do two podcasts. We're going to, I'm going to attack this opportunity, and we're going to be better because of it. And it's the same way with your playing career. Just take it and take full advantage of the opportunity to play this game. I promise you, I wouldn't trade in a bat right now because I'd get blown up on an inside fastball. But I would – but I would love to slide into second hard and take out a second baseman. I'd love to just run first to third. I'd love to score on a hit to the outfield. Once it's gone, it's gone. And you get old codgers like us that grow bad beards and get to coach you. While you get to play, (laughs) play it as hard as you can. Love you guys. Dude, that is so good. Awesome. And I I really, you know, I I, – dude, you are everything that we want to be surrounded by. You know, you're you're the – Dude, you're, you're the dude, man. You are you are what we want in our lives, and we appreciate you. I appreciate you immensely. I appreciate the trust you've given me, um, and and I appreciate you on and off the field, on and off camera. And you're the type of guy that you ever need anything. You've got uh, you. We've got your back. Um, there you know, no doubt. You know, no doubt. Speaking for speaking for Jeff on that. Um, but anything we can do to help you out, you know, uh, you got any questions on any former players or anything like that? Looking to get into some GGC gear. Um, you know, we're here to help you out. But man, if you're a player today and you're not considering uh, at least having a conversation uh, with Sheets, uh, I think you're crazy. But um, <laughs> You know, our players, thank you so much. Hopefully they've been listening. Parents have been listening because I want them to understand really who you're turning your son over to when you uh, when you go to college. So, dude, certified video gold. Video That's, uh, uh, Zoom gold. Zoom yeah, gold. Certified, certified Zoom gold. I'm t- I might, I might go, I'm going to go trademark that pretty quickly before you get off this call. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I think I tweeted that last night, but that's fine. Uh, run with it. Run with it. We're in different circles here. Um, can, can I just, can I just echo all that right back, man? I just, I, I truly admire both of you. Your friendships matter to me. They, I value them. Um, and, and with so many guys that I get a chance to come in contact with, I'm always up to talk with you guys. And um, you're dead on, man. Players, parents, I, I, I'm, I ain't going anywhere. Um, I, have, I have no dreams of going anywhere else but living the rest of my life in the Georgia Gwinnett College baseball uniform. We're going to build the pinnacle of small college baseball programs here at GGC, and we want you to be part of it. So go go where you need to go. Wear the sweatshirt, and you'll find out. We got pretty good, good gear, too. Uh, we're going to get you on mine, by the way. Yeah, well, we're going we're gonna to get you guys suited. I think I got a bucket hat or two <laughs> with your names on it. Um, there we go. Stuff coming. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for letting me wrap with you. Awesome. Hey, buddy. Th- thank you so much, man. Okay. Jeff. Jeff, uh, I think we could possibly get Sheets a Canes hat, maybe, or something. Oh, he's already got it. I, I got plenty of Canes oh, hats. I have hooked right. him up right. with so much gear. I got so – dude, I've been repping I want, I want a Georgia – that's the request. I want yep. a Georgia Gwinnett green dry fit long sleeve T-shirt. Done. Like that's all green. I want. I don't know if they'll let me back on campus, but, I mean, I've got I've got them <laughs> for sure. Green long sleeve dry fit, man. Noted. Noted. Good stuff. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Sheets. I know you probably got really the man, dude. I, yeah. I will yeah. once we do get this out, I will push anyone and everyone, especially these amateurs, to hear this. Gosh, you just you mimic everything I believe, man. I love it. Yeah. Man. The, 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 the statues, they're not building them, are they? No shit. It's I, like I, it, with <laughs> us, we'll we'll have our team meeting every year at the beginning of the year, and it's like Hey, uh, Jordan Adele, he wore that number last year. Yeah, right. Like, he's gone. <laughs> he just keeps moving. 
Uh, it's just like, there's, there's yeah. a, it's not about any of us, man. It's so cool. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. I appreciate so cool. you. Good man. Sheets, man, take care. Um, take care of the family down there. Please yes, make sure everybody's washing their hands and uh, miss you. Love seeing you on the Zoom. Um, but I uh, love hearing your podcast and feeling it in my heart, man. Appreciate it. And uh, stay safe, buddy. All right. See you guys. You, brother. Take care. Wow. That was really good. Thank you so much for joining us today. Big shout out to Sheets for joining us. Give him a follow on social media at Coach Sheets 3. Again, Coach Sheets 3. If you're interested in learning more about Georgia Gwinnett College Baseball, check them out at ggcathletics.com. If you enjoyed this episode, help us out. Like, comment, subscribe, review, and share. Give us a follow on social media at Canecast Show. You can reach out to me on all social channels at Rob Younce or email me at robyounce at gmail.com. I welcome your feedback as we are looking to improve this show every single time out. Stay safe, wash your hands, and don't complain about the bad hops because anybody can catch the good ones.